I'm Hans Kalert for Precision Aerobatics, and this is PA Builds. Soldering is a skill that we all need to have. It's something that many struggle with, but it's actually quite easy and something that many even find fun. The best pieces of advice I can offer for soldering RC components is to 1. Have a powerful iron. A 40 watt unit is the smallest I would ever recommend, and I use a 60 watt unit with a base that allows me to adjust the heat level. 2. Use a high quality rosin core solder that's sold specifically for electronics use. 3. Use a chisel shaped tip. This gives you an increased surface area. 4. Have a way to hold the work pieces together like a soldering jig or a set of third hands. 5. Don't be afraid to crank that iron up. A cold iron will require more time on the piece, allowing the wire to dissipate the heat down its length. This is fighting a losing battle. And 6. Finally, Give your finished connections a good tug to test their integrity and expose any failure-prone cold joints. Their appearance isn't always enough to pick them out. After the wires are cleanly stripped back, the strands twisted, and they're clamped, clean the iron's tip on the damp sponge and then feed fresh solder onto the tip. Keeping the molten solder here allows for quicker heat transfer, and we'll now tin the wires that will be joined. Place the solder on the bare wire and then touch the molten puddle tip to the wire. The solder should flow into the bare wire nearly instantly. For thin wires like this, if you have to hold the iron and feed in more solder, the temperature needs to be increased. Heat is a necessary evil, but we need to minimize the contact time to avoid transferring heat down the bare wires. The other extreme is also true. If it's too hot, it could instantly melt the insulation. So the contact needs to be minimal on thinner wires. When we do battery connectors with thicker wire, they take the heat a bit better, so we can hold it there a little longer. Once you have both sides tinned, cut and slide your heat shrink tubing into place. Clamp one side into the holder and prepare a clean tip with a fresh puddle of solder. Now bring the wires together again and touch the tip to the pair. The solder should flow out immediately and envelop the pair. Molten solder will appear bright and shiny like mercury. Hold the wires together, trying not to move them, until the solder cools and hardens, taking on a grainy, duller appearance. If you've been holding the wires in your fingertips, you're probably feeling the heat creeping down the wire. So if you need to, use a set of pliers or forceps. When doing battery connections, it's the same idea. We must first tin the areas to be joined like the pads of these Dean connectors. Though the contact time here will be more, again, having the right amount of heat is critical for success without melting the connector body and misaligning the contacts. I usually max out the iron temp for these. Give them a good test and then slide and shrink the tubing over them.